Kelly Thorne Glore here from iBloom. I hope you are having a fantastic start to this week. I wanted to take a moment to share a devotional with you that I actually shared with our iBloom team yesterday during our Monday prayer call. On Mondays, our team gathers, and it's just an opportunity for me to share a devotional with them, for us to pray for our company, to pray for the women we get to serve, and to pray for our team and our families, and it's just an amazing time. And so this devotional I shared was from Draw the Circle. It's a 40-day prayer challenge from Mark Batterson. Highly recommend this book and also love the book that this goes along with, which is The Circle Maker. So our team has gone through both of these books, highly recommend them, love them. Um, in the book, he talks about um, miracles and what if we had stopped right before the miracle happens. And so he asks some different what if scenarios. And so he says, what if the Israelites had stopped circling Jericho on day six? What if Naaman had only dipped in the river six times? Or what if Elijah had quit praying for rain on his sixth request? And then he says, the answer is obvious. The miracle would have been forfeited right before it happened. And then he goes on to talk about his own personal journey and what if he had quit? And that really led me to think about our iBloom history. In the early days of iBloom, it was hard. It was hard to start a business. I was young. I came from a church background, so I had no business experience whatsoever. It was before social media times. It was really before internet marketing was a big focus and before a lot of people were doing things online. It was also in our early days, early years, that the recession hit. And people went from one-on-one -on -one coaching to putting food on their table. And so we really had to reevaluate our business model and figure out how do we serve more people at a lower cost. And that's really how our whole strategy is structured now is because of that recession. We had to reevaluate how do we keep the doors open? How do we continue to serve women? How do we continue to inspire, which means to breathe life into someone? And our goal at iBloom is to really breathe life into your hopes, dreams, and goals from a life perspective and a business perspective. And so we had to reevaluate our entire plan. And so I started asking myself, what if I would quit? And I can tell you there were many days that I wanted to quit. Um, especially right after I had left my position at the church. I had, you know, saved up money to leave um, and to be able to do iBloom full time. But I really had just kind of budgeted the exact amount my bills were at the time. And I was single at the time, uh, not married, didn't have any kids. So it was really all dependent on me and what I was able to provide and really what God was able to provide. Um, but that first, like, couple of months, I received an electric bill that was about four times the amount that I had budgeted for. And I can tell you, on that day, I wanted to quit. It was too hard. Or on the days that I got hate mail, or on the days that the clients wanted a full refund and we had done all of the work, or on the days where it was just hard. It was really, really hard. And I couldn't pay our bills or we were struggling to make ends meet. There were lots of scenarios in those early days that made me want to quit. But we didn't. And we kept persevering. And not only did we keep persevering, but we added more team members. We allowed women to serve in their sweet spot. And I think about had we quit, our team as it is, those women wouldn't be serving in the capacity they are. They wouldn't get to bless our clients the way that they do. They wouldn't be serving in their sweet spot. They wouldn't be able to provide an income for their family in this particular role, doing something that they absolutely love. I also think about, well, if we had quit, that email that I got last week from the woman who said that she was going through a dark time and read our Facebook post every single day for weeks, and that she was convinced it saved her life. I wonder, what if we had quit? What would have happened to her? Or one of our one-on-one -on -one clients who's been working with us for a couple of years, 
who sent an email a few months ago that said, you know, I came to you for business stuff. I needed help with my business. And not only has my business tripled its income in the last two years, but my marriage is better than it's ever been. I'm living into my priorities. I'm working less time. I'm able to have the relationship with my kids that I really want because I'm no longer slave to my business. And I think about the countless other women who we've had the opportunity to serve. Um, one of the things that's super passionate about, that I'm super passionate about, is using our I Choose to Love My Life book as a resource to bless women. And so we often make donations to rehabilitation hospitals or prisons or uh, programs that serve single moms, different capacities. And I got an email from the coordinator of one of the hospitals, and she had the opportunity to give our I Choose To book uh, to a woman who came in last week. And she got to share with her about God's love because of that resource. And that woman had, you know, said, I was going to take my life. And so hopefully she's reading that book and she's diving in and she's seeing there's hope and purpose to her life. And so I say all of that to say, what if we had quit? And what if you had quit? I think about the thousands of women that we get to serve on a daily basis. And I'm amazed and I'm thankful that God gave me the perseverance to keep going, to keep pressing forward. And so if you feel like you're on the verge of quitting, think back. Think back. What if you had quit a while ago? How would things be different? But also think forward. Because God's going to allow you to have an impact on people that you don't see right now. I didn't see all of this back in those days when it was really hard and I wanted to quit. I wish I had. And so I'm praying that God gives you a glimpse of those what-if scenarios. And that you will keep pressing forward. You'll keep seeking God above all else. I want to invite you to a boot camp that I'm leading. It actually starts next week. But if you register by this Thursday, May 15th, there are some great bonuses, including a one-on-one -on -one session with me that you will not want to miss. But this boot camp is going to be an opportunity for you to create structure around your business. It's going to be an opportunity for you to get really clear on where you are and where you want to be. And we're going to cover things like a list building strategy and how to create products and really how to grow your funnel so that you're offering uh, different things at different price points so that people can afford the services you're providing and you're able to serve a larger amount of people and share your gifts and passions with them. The website's below, um, and if you have any questions, let us know. Um, but you can read all about the boot camp there. Again, it starts next week, May 20th. And it's going to be fast-paced. We have four sessions, and we only meet uh, for two weeks. So it's a fast-paced course because I want you to take action quickly. There's some other great bonuses there. So be sure to sign up before May 15th, and I hope to see you there because we're going to talk about how to put a structure in place so that you don't quit. And when you look back five years from now and you ask those what-if questions, you're going to see how God's moved and how he's used you to impact the multitude. Have a good week.